it's me, Stormy, and here's your horoscope for March 2018. Oh my gosh. All right, Scorpio. So this month we've got sign changes, we've got planets reversing, we've got three moons, two of which, only two of which, are full, and a new moon. So lots going on this month, so let's just jump in and get to it. Now, as we begin the month, one of the most glorious things that's actually happening all month long is that Jupiter is in your sign. So this is phenomenal for you, chances to expand, you're getting out into the world differently, different experiences, all that good stuff. But as we begin the month here on March 1st, we've got a full moon happening at 11 degrees of Virgo, and this is happening in your 11th house. So this is giving me the indication for you, honestly, that just with Jupiter being here, that maybe this full moon is not so um, emotional, you could for sure have some endings, acknowledgements, and adjustments to your friendship zone. You know, if you've been working one place for a very long time and now you're leaving, you're getting prepared to move on, maybe you're wrapping up saying goodbye to this social group. Maybe you're forming a long range goal or a plan, a new plan, right? But more so than that, what I feel like is this is actually helping your social zone. Maybe it's actually making things very social if you're leaving. Maybe they're throwing you a party. You know what I mean? And it's also, I think, putting you in perspective of things with technology. Maybe you're reaching out, talking to people from your past or friends or something like that. There could definitely be this space, though, in this 11th house where there's a lot of support happening for you at this time. And I really like and enjoy that for you. Now, on the 6th, we have both Mercury and Venus making this move over into your 6th house. So again, this focuses me for you at work. I just feel like you have so much work and family stuff going on, but work and expansion stuff. So with these two energies here, I really want to caution you, first of all, with Mercury being in Aries. It's very abrupt conversation. You're speaking quickly. You're speaking directly. You know, just be mindful that the tongue is very, very sharp. So don't use your words in a cutting way. I think that Venus helps here a little bit. I think she helps put some healing salve on anything with work, the daily routine, maybe coworkers, and of course, into your health as well. And for Scorpio, you know, for some of you, this could be um, relieving if you get lots of headaches, you've had a traumatic brain injury, anything like that. This could actually be kind of a relieving energy for you with Venus being here. Now, on the 8th, we've got Jupiter, who is in your sign, taking a retrograde. So now, instead of expanding out into the world, you could, yes, slowly still be moving some things out there, new goals, new plans. But I feel like the new goals and the new plans you'll be reflecting for the next four months will really come from a place within. What do you want to do now? Where do you want to go with the wisdom that you've acquired over the years? What are you prepared to step out into the world to do? What is your new perspective on yourself if you've changed what do you think of you now? So it's a really neat time for that, I think. But on the 14th, I think this is an important aspect to talk about. Jupiter, who is now retrograde here in your first house, is going to come into a semi-square with Saturn, who's over here in your third house. This aspect says you've got to restructure, reorganize this third house in order to take the most advantage of expanding yourself out in your first house. So this looks like, where do you need to look at where you're communicating, how you're communicating, the decisions that you're making, where does this third house zone, your edge education, all of these things. Where does it need to be restructured, reevaluated, reset, right? So that you can really take advantage of launching yourself out into the world, launching your perceptions out, launching your new mind and your new talents out really, really well as Jupiter comes out of this retrograde. So consider that. It's a very nice energy to be using even in a semi-square. Now, on the 17th of the month, um, we've got a new moon happening in Pisces at 26 degrees. This is going to light up your fifth house, the true love sector. Now, you already have Jupiter here. Even when he's retrograde, he's the biggest planet. He's the biggest benefic planet. So you could also still be getting some benefits, some opportunities from him. If you're single, you're looking to usher in a little something. This is a wonderful energy for that. If you're coupled up, this could just bring some new excitement to the relationship, a fresh new start, which I think is, is good. And at the same time, on the same day, we've got Mars moving over here into Capricorn, into the third house, and Mars wants to move. Capricorn wants to achieve. So we're going to move. We're going to do things. You could be speaking. You could be looking at, you could be speaking to someone new, right? There's a very, there's every indication that someone new could be popping into your world this month. Um, this could be 
nicer conversation between you and somebody you're already um, in a relationship with. Now, I do think, too, that this is a wonderful energy to talk about kids with kids. Um, your inner child self-expression speaks of joy out into the world. Allow this to be a fresh start, a new decision, right? Make a new decision that you want to move forward with a little bit more joy. What's that joy capacity look like for you? That's different for all of us, okay? Now, on the 20th, we've got the sun entering into Aries, and we're also starting the astrological new year, which means springtime, fresh new beginning again. You see, there's lots of layers just peeling back, giving you fresh new starts over and over and over again this month, and I freaking love that. As well, we've got Mercury going retrograde from the 22nd all the way until the 15th of April. Now, for you, I'm going to tell you, Mercury retrograde is pretty standard. When it's retrograde, we relook, re-edit, rethink, reconnect all of these things. It'll be happening in your sixth house of work, health, um, daily routine, service, all of those kinds of things. So if you can wait to make big decisions, if you can wait to launch something brand new until after April 15th, until after this retrograde, you'll be all the better. But use this time. Where do you re need to relook at your daily routine, your health, um, your mental wellness? Where do you need to relook at this as well? This is a wonderful time to use that Mercury retrograde here. Now, I will say too with coworkers, if you got some things going on with co-workers remember no one's exempt from mercury retrograde so some things could go, go a little south you could have a big miscommunication if you're filing paperwork after the 22nd mind you that that co-worker who really needed to file that thing it could get lost and you end up having to redo it so just pay attention to the mercury energy don't stress don't sweat your weave out about it but things happen when mercury is retrograde okay now, as we end the month here on the 31st, we've got a full moon happening in the sign of Libra. And for you, this is in the quietest sector of your chart. This is in your 12th house. So I feel like with the full moon, really it's a time for you to shed. It's very private. This is a very private hidden place of you. And I think that it will remind you to recharge your batteries at the end of the month, right? Spiritually, emotionally, physically, um, laughing, play, have you connected with children, um, art, music, dancing, any of these things. You're going to want to make sure that you just recharge the world and your world have a different speed and pace right now. Mercury's in Aries, Mars is in Capricorn, we've retrograded, the world has got a pace that's a bit quickened while it's quickening but changing directions. So you're going to want to make sure at the end of the month for the next four weeks, you pay attention and definitely recharge. As well, Venus is going to be moving into Taurus into your seventh house. So I think this helps nurture some relationships if you'll take time to slow down as well. All right, Scorps, I love you guys so much. I look forward to seeing you connect on Facebook, in the classes, stormygrace.com. Whatever you do, know that I love you. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you next month.